Today's scripture reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, where he's talking about justification by faith. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that sufferings produce perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. society today that uh, is becoming more and more distant from the church every day. We talked a little bit about this already. We're surrounded by people who have no encounter with the church or with Christianity. And there's also a large number of people who have walked away from the church because of any number of reasons, including the deconstruction of their faith, hypocritical actions of other Christians, and even religious trauma that they have experienced within the church. Regardless, the fact is that people have been leaving the church more and more every day, and the reasons are as diverse as the people who are leaving. So, during this worship series, we're talking about the sacred searching, we're attempting to answer questions from those who consider themselves atheists, agnostics, nominal Christians, asking about the church and about its leadership. We've already discussed how some Christians seem to be arrogant, dismissive and rude. We also talked about religious diversity and as well as even our views on scripture. But this week, we take on a theodicy. The existence of God and at the same time acknowledging that evil exists in the world. So will you pray with me? Gracious and almighty God, God, we come striving to hear your word and to hear your message for us today. And so, God, I ask that you, would, that you would open up our hearts and minds, that we may hear you speak to us. And, God, that the words that I say would no longer be my own, but that they would be your words and your message for your people. All this I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So back in the early 1900s, a newspaper publisher by the name of William Randolph Hearst coined a phrase, and that phrase was, If it bleeds, it leads. If it bleeds, it leads. This became the mantra of so many news outlets, even to this day. And of course, it doesn't take long for us to notice that our news cycle is filled with stories of pain and suffering 
loss and violence and hatred, evil in the world. It's still true that if it bleeds, it leads on any news broadcast. Therefore, when you tune into your local, your local or national news, you're going to be bombarded by stories of pain, suffering, and loss, and most certainly, evil. It is all around us. We can't seem to escape it. Even if you decide not to watch any news at all, because our social media feeds fill up with it. We see it outside of our doors when we go out to the store. We see it everywhere. There is no escape. Maybe that's why one of our questions focuses on this thought of evil, suffering, and the goodness of God. See, our question today is one of the most common questions that people have, not only outside the Christian faith, but also inside, because I'm sure that many of you have that same question. How can God be so good when there is so much evil, pain, and suffering in the world? Well, let's wrestle with that a little bit, shall we? Now, in order to answer this question, or at least get a little closer to the understanding of it, we've got to acknowledge some of our human assumptions of God. These are the things that that we assume about God, regardless of their validity. Some of them come from Scripture passages, but I've always warned us to be careful about proof texting, that is, pulling certain verses out of context so that the Bible fits our narrative. And so I've got a couple of verses for you. The first, we assume that if we have faith, God will protect us. Psalm 91. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. Does this mean that nothing will ever happen to us? It certainly sounds that way. As long as we have enough faith. Another assumption comes from Proverbs 3.12, and that is that suffering is a punishment. It says, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. We assume that our suffering is God's discipline. Do we? (laughs) Well, finally, we have this thought of Everything happens for a reason. This tells us that our suffering has a higher purpose, that God has a reason for giving us this suffering. God is giving us suffering? Really? Now, I've talked about this in the past. Maybe everything happens for a reason, but maybe that reason is because we make bad decisions. Maybe that's what it is. And there's a little more to this, and we'll get to it, Because it's not necessarily our decisions, but maybe those of others that affect us. As we take another step closer to answering these difficult questions, we need to break down the assumptions just a little bit. Maybe even pick them a little apart. First, as we think about God protecting us from everything, we should remember the story of Job and how he pretty much lost everything. Friends, family, livestock, land, even health failed him. But, this, but was this because he lacked faith in God? On the contrary, Job was incredibly faithful. Deeply faithful people experience suffering. And it doesn't take much for us to look around the room and recognize this. Deeply faithful people experience suffering. We see it every day. And I'm sure that if I asked all of you here today whether, whether you know someone that you consider faithful or maybe it's yourself, if they have experienced suffering, do you know somebody who has experienced suffering? Who is deeply, deeply faithful? I'm sure you could name a few. Maybe the person sitting next to you. Our faith does not protect us from suffering. Next, could suffering be a punishment for sin? If we look at the entirety of Scripture, the entirety of Scripture, we find that God is a loving God, one that is not vindictive, however, one that does discipline us. But I think we need to be clear. God's discipline never comes in the form of physical pain 
illness, or loss. God's discipline manifests itself through guilt, remorse, examinations of our conscience. And we should also recognize that suffering can come through natural consequences of sin. I probably don't have to mention this again, but when when we say that everything happens for a reason, we imply that God is causing our suffering. And this can't be further from the truth. God does not cause our suffering. It's bad theology and should be rejected whenever we hear it. Remember that thing that says that, uh, that God won't give you more than you can handle? I think we've talked about this a number of times. God will help you handle all that you've been given. God will help you handle all that you've been given. But if God doesn't cause it, where does our suffering come from? Where does the evil come from in the world? And so maybe we'll share these four brief causes of suffering and evil in the world, although there are certainly many, many others. If we read the first chapter of James, verse 16, we can come to the understanding that everything comes from God is good. Therefore, if it's not good, it's not from God. Of course, you might be thinking, well, that's wonderful and good, but, but why is there so much pain and anger in the world? Why does evil exist? Why do bad things happen to good people? And as I wrestle with our question today, I'm reminded of a conversation that I had with a clergy colleague of mine. She said that there were three truths that we believe about God and know about the world around us. And although there are many others, these are the three. God is all-powerful. God is all good. Evil exists in the world. We can reconcile any two of these at any given moment in our lives, but we cannot reconcile all three at the same time. We can say that God is all powerful and that God is all good, but then why does evil exist? But if we say that God is all-powerful and that evil exists in the world, then God must not be all good. And likewise, if God is all good and evil exists in the world, then God must not be all-powerful. I think we need to take a fourth piece of this puzzle. If God is all-powerful and if God is all-good as we know God is, then what do we do with the evil that exists in the world? Dave mentioned it earlier. We have this this human agency. We have this opportunity to make decisions. God has freely given away the one thing that makes sense of the evil that exists. God has given us free will. John Wesley would actually call it uh, human liberty. But we have been given the choi- a choice in our lives. We can follow God's plan. We can walk away from God. The story that we hear in Genesis, remember the story of Adam and Eve, that archetypal story, it's our story. We choose the apple almost every time, although we don't read apple's terms and conditions, Right? We've been given this certain amount of human liberty to make choices. This is where the evil in this world comes from. It's from our human choices. Sure, if we all chose the right path, God's will for our lives, this world would be completely different. But not everyone chooses wisely. But God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Seasons change. Life has variations along the way, but God never changes. God is good. God's mercy and grace are with us all the time. We hear this in Psalm 23, that that psalm that David wrote when he said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. God's grace follows us. It's amazing grace. And it is always available to us, regardless of what we've done or what we are doing. God's grace and mercy is with us, especially in the pain and the struggles of our life. 
Maybe you can think of time when you faced a trial or a struggle in your life. It, it may be something that happened years ago or maybe something a little more recently. You might actually be traveling through it right now. But you can also see how God has walked and is walking with you along this journey. Now, I know that there have been many times throughout my life when I felt like I was alone. The time I thought my life decisions led me to places that I want to be. Times when family relationships were falling apart, when I almost threw my marriage away because I was only thinking about myself, but yet God was there, guiding, encouraging, if I would just listen. That always seems to be the problem, doesn't it? If we would just listen. We feel like we know the answer. We feel like we know the way out, or maybe we just feel like we are in control of our circumstances. And it is in those times when we realize God's goodness as we are always welcome back with open arms and somehow those relationships and life circumstances are redeemed, are reconciled. But we're still left with this problem. We keep coming back to this, don't we? We're still left with this problem of the evil suffering and the loss that we experience in this world. We are faced with questions of why it exists in the first place. So maybe there's a few reasons that we can look at. First and probably the most prominent is simple human activity. As I mentioned earlier, God has blessed us with the ability to make choices, and some call this free will. This is human liberty, the ability to make the choices to follow God's guidance or turn away from it. Our choices affect our lives and sometimes the lives of others. Our choices not only affect us, they affect others, good or bad, good waves or bad waves. What are you sending out there? Likewise, other people's choices have an effect on us. Second, there are things that, are, that uh, insurance companies call acts of God. We call them natural disasters. They're part of this world we live in, and throughout history we hear stories of floods and volcanoes, tropical storms, hurricanes, tornadoes, and earthquakes. These are just results of living in a planet that can inhabit life. It is a natural part of life, probably why we call them natural disasters. We also should acknowledge that some of these disasters are things that result from our own actions especially as we look maybe at climate change or the effect of human living on this planet. And third, we must look at illness. While we don't want to admit it at times, illness is a natural process which is connected to life, death, and the environment around us. We talked a little bit about this on Thursday morning, about certain things, certain decisions that people make. I think we brought up PFCs. Uh, that we didn't choose to make cookware out of PFCs, at least I didn't, but I choose to cook with them. And so sometimes if, if there's results that happen from those, those are decisions that other people make that affect our lives, as I had said earlier. And lastly, we need to admit that there are things that just happen. Many times we call these accidents. Life is governed by natural and physical laws that, that we can't get away from. Things just happen, and we've got to agree that, that, that God is not the primary agent behind those accidents, that God is not causing one car to hit another. God is not causing the accidents in this world. So if we agree that God is not the cause of our human suffering and the evil in the world, what is God's response to the suffering and the evil? I believe that God provides comfort and peace in the midst of suffering. When our world seems like it's upside down, God offers an anchor to our soul and brings this, this sense of peace. Jesus tells us in John 14 that he offers peace, but it's not the peace that the world gives. It's a different kind of peace. This is the peace of God that offers something that passes all understanding. Have you ever experienced a sense of peace in the middle of something that you probably shouldn't have? Maybe you were in a really bad situation and you really just felt peace within your soul. That's God at work. That's God at work offering that peace. 
I also fully believe and trust in Paul's words from Romans 8, 28, and it says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God brings good out of suffering. I shared a little bit about the, the birth of, of Sherry and I's daughters in the past and how God used that situation to provide comfort and peace to many parents who also spent time in the NICU when I was a chaplain there. Many times this knowledge comes in retrospect as you think about the suffering in your own life. As you think about all of that, you don't notice in the moment, but afterward you can see how God moved during that time. And many times when people are asked about difficult times in their lives, as they look back on them, and maybe I could ask you the same question, you remember those really difficult times in your life, would you change them? Some of you would say yes. But some, after a certain amount of time, you go, you know what? I'm a different person because of that. My life is better because of that. And finally, God's response to suffering is demonstrated in not the death of Jesus Christ, but in the resurrection. The ult- this is the ultimate healing, the ultimate response to all of our suffering. Through the resurrection of Christ, God makes the profound statement that the worst thing will never be the last thing. The worst thing in your life will never be the last thing. And so let me close by repeating that God does not cause suffering, Much of our suffering comes through natural causes and accidents and simple human choices, our choices that we make. I can understand how suffering suffering can bring feelings of, of doubts and questioning, which is why this question is here, but this is where our faith can either be tested and fail or it can be test tested and strengthened. God's presence is with us always, especially in the difficult times. God's presence is with us even in the midst of our suffering and in the midst of the evil that is around us in this world. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you for your presence. God, we thank you for the journey that you have us on. God, that you walk this journey with us. God, that you never promised that we would be free from all pain and suffering. You never promised us that we would not see evil around us. But you did say that you would be with us. You did say that you would walk our journeys with us, that you would help us through the difficult times. And that you also said that good would come. That we might find it incredibly hard to see it at that time, but God, somewhere down the road, there will be something that you are able to use that experience to affect. God, you have this beautiful way of, of weaving together all of our choices, all of our bad choices and good choices, all of the pain and the suffering and the mountaintop experiences, weaving them all together into this beautiful tapestry we call life. And it is the life that you have given to us. And so God, help us in these times. Help us in the times where it doesn't seem like peace is prevailing. Help us in times when evil seems to be rampant all around us. Help us when we are suffering. Help us to see your presence in the midst of all of it. And help us to follow you. And all this I ask. In the grace-filled name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.